They do say good things come to those who wait. I, of course, knew that someone would come back with that codicil of white. The visions let me know that much. However, they don't always reveal everything, so it was still a surprise that of all our group to remain, it's Velen who managed to get that information. I do wonder, though, if that's because of her choice of companions. They did, after all, bring down that dragon and stop plans through Agar, so I shall have to be careful with them. Still, the spell has been cast, so I can take my time and follow at my leisure. After all, it's going to take my little helpers some time to get ready as well. Having them around is certainly amusing, but I'm already growing tired of them. Still, I don't imagine many of them are going to come back alive. That suits me just fine, really. I mean, I've already given so much to get this far. Lots of few more lives. Nothing, really. Don't worry, sister. We're almost there. It's almost time to get what we both deserve. This is Red Moon. Role playing. As always, it is a cold grey morning that greets you in Lonely Wood, this small forest settlement on the furthest northmost edge of the Ten Towns. Still, a morning it is, and after having some provisions at this inn, it does seem as if you are ready to greet the day. Velen is quite eager to collect your belongings, your steeds, and the sleds from the little stable attached to this inn, and begin the expedition in earnest. But what do you two do? Well, Roman has, of course, been contemplating the words of the Deva, the words that he received in his dream. And he's been looking around for that that kobold, the one that isn't quite alive. Is it... It's only one, right? Indeed. You find it, preparing the sled with the others. Of course, while the other three are sort of quite excited and chattering to themselves, this one kobold simply lifts up crates, puts them down, stands there. Mm. I put my head to the side and I, I study it for a while. Not yet. And um, I begin looking around, trying to see where's Roshak at. Well, I've been sitting and enjoying a bit of breakfast and, uh, yeah, I've slept a bit uneasily. I feel like there's a few conflicting ideas of people and forces that want me to do things. Seems like they're mostly going in the same direction. But I've been sitting there and having some breakfast and occasionally disappearing from sight as I practice a spell. And you'd see when you go off by yourself a few distrustful looking villagers glancing your way every now and then, but most of them head to the woods. They'll be heading there to do their best do a day of logging. They, of course, have no idea that in a few years, some of the trees in one area will be extremely tough and extremely resilient, but that will take time to grow. Indeed. I did something that I thought could be of benefit to the land and its people here, since this is such a big part of their livelihood. Why not just come in and do something nice without even telling someone? But clearly, that is not what my powers are meant to be used for. Or at least, that's what... At least she didn't appreciate that very much. Roman, if you go looking for Roshek after some time, perhaps you'll find him just outside, looking at the woods. You will notice as well that the town is getting ready. Probably this evening they will, you suppose, burn their resources, the food, in the name of Oral, the Frost Maiden. Hmm. Here they sacrifice resources, not people. I wish that would have been the case in uh, East Haven. Really? 
Yes. Still seem a bit of a waste, doesn't it? <laughs> I suppose so. But trees grow back. Lives, well, when a life is lost, it is lost. Yeah. I don't really understand why people put up with it. I mean, it's clearly not helping. I'm not sure. It's Everyone seems to think that it does, but... But you can't argue the fact that, well, it hasn't actually solved anything. <laughs> well, what will happen if they stop? Will it get darker? Colder? I suppose that's what they're worried about. That's probably why they don't dare stop. Faith is... It's tricky that way. Anything else you learnt here? Mm, not much. They seem to have been spared most of the uh, horrors of what, what has been happening. Seems like life is going on much as it has in, in the past. They're the lucky ones, I guess. Which means that there isn't much here for us to do but get the resources uh, that we, we think we need and then move off towards our goal, finding what we were looking for. Yeah, and I pat my bag where I have the giant golden ring that I found in that fortress. I don't know how much trade we'll be able to do here, but I suppose, yeah, some basic provisions should be able to find our way into our packs. We don't need any mulled wine, though. You have that covered. <laughs> yeah, or whatever we might need. You know, I was thinking, what's if it can actually provide some truly helpful things, you know, like a, a part of a magic potion of invisibility or a, a hill giant strength? Hmm, that sounds... Very interesting, actually. If it could do that, that could truly be something. Yeah. If you call us an alchemist cup, after all, I don't know if that because you get things that you want to mix, or things that are already done for you. I suppose I might try it sometime during the day, once it's recharged. Hmm. You do that. You do that, Roshek. Well, it's about time, huh? You'll notice that Velen is by the sleds, getting them ready. She's still a little distance away, though. Roshek, if there was something you wanted to say to Roman now, before you set off on your journey, now would be the time. But of course, if you want to get going, you can get going. I look at the uh, reanimated kobold, standing there stiffly, while the others are working around it. <laughs> He's a funny little bugger, isn't he? He's an abomination, an affront to Lathander. I've tolerated him so far. I know not how much longer I can actually take it. Don't be surprised if you find him dead, truly dead. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose. Do you think she'd mind terribly? No, oh, she probably would, but what's she going to do about it? I doubt her magic missiles will be enough to stop me, especially if you're there to help me. Of course. I'll back you up if that's what you have to do, I say, and I give you a little slap on the back, and then uh, quiet my voice as I realise we're quite close to them. Well, it won't come to that, I'm sure. Nah. Probably not, but uh, yeah, you could uh, you could always create some sort of ultimatum she seems in dire need of our help and we've proved ourselves hmm. that is true perhaps she can be reasoned with well let's go and uh, talk to her see what she has to say hmm. and the two of you move over Velen is in the middle of stowing away Professor Scant putting it on her sled. It glows a cheerful purple as it's sort of sequestered on one of the various crates. It occurs to you as well, Roshik, that if you wanted, you could easily fit your treasure bag on this big sled, and then it wouldn't encumber you while riding at all. I do look out for a little place to slot my things in. I assume we'll be acquiring a fair few other things if we actually get into this 
Yithrin City. And as you do so, a kobold happily goes, yep, yep, I'll take that for you, yep, yep, puts it on the sled, and Velen looks the pair of you. Well, I for one had a rather pleasant sleep. Did you two sleep well? Hmm. Well, it was a nice bed, I suppose. Mm, troubled dreams, though. To be expected, given everything that's going on in the world. Hmm. Well, I certainly can understand that. Anyway, I do believe it's time to be off. I think we have everything we need, unless you want to pack some extra provisions, but I believe the time has come for us to head straight east to the Rigged Glacier. Sounds good for me. How long are we expecting the journey to take? Well, if we're lucky, it could take as little as four or five days. Probably, though, a little longer. We will, of course, have to rest several times. Hopefully the weather will be acceptable. Do we expect any run-ins with tribes along that route? She shrugs. I don't know. You tell me, priest. I look over to Roman. What do I know about the Regged? Are they uh, moving in this area as well? They certainly would be. But again, you don't know if you'll run into them or not. That's entirely up to happenstance. You do know that if you start heading straight east from here, though, well, the Ten Towers will get further and further away. There isn't that much out there on the Great Dales, especially if you're not just randomly poking in caves. We might come across someone, but we're heading in a direction where, well, there isn't so many people around, certainly not Ten Towners. There might be some tribes attracted to that area for that reason, but uh, we shall have to see. I haven't travelled here myself. Well, that sounds good to me. Well, if you two are ready to go, then let us go. And she gets her sled ready and begins getting ready to ride out. And I sit up on my axe beak, Rudy, and uh, get us started. Well, and there's something I've been meaning to speak to you about for some time now. As we have finished stowing all the cargo, I think this might be the time to, to discuss it. Yes... You know that I'm a priest of Lathander, do you not? Yes, you make it abundantly clear. You say it every single day, pretty much. Well, I have tolerated it thus far. But, um, this reanimated kobold that you have with you, I cannot allow it. It, it is an affront in the eyes of Lathander. I would like to ask you to let it go back to rest. So we could solve it that way. You don't need it anymore. Anyways, we have packed all the cargo now, and there's more than enough kobolds to handle the rest. Roll a persuasion check. That's a 15. She squints a little. Then she rolls her eyes. Oh, I suppose I should be grateful you've abided it for so long. Even though it has done absolutely nothing except be of use to you and aid us in our quest and task so far, but... Yes, sure, whatever, I'll get rid of the hideous abomination. Oh no, look at it, look how terrifying. And she points at little kobold, just sitting there staring at you. <laughs> that is good. I'm glad you could see a reason, Velen. It means a lot to me. I'm happy to keep things peaceful, even if <laughs> your reasons are foolish. Very well, uh, I'm sorry, Gleek, it seems you're released from service. She clicks her fingers mutters an incantation under her breath, and the kobold blinks, oddly, and then just slumps the ground, stone dead. Rest in peace. And go to, go to your god. Who does the uh, kobolds pray to? Do I know that? Roll me a nature or religion check. Fourteen. Yeah, you think... You think they worship dragons, don't they? There are some dragon-like beings that are almost gods in their own right. Bahamut, Tiamat, but you're not entirely sure which ones they prefer. You notice the other kobolds briefly go and start prodding the corpse, and one of them comes to you and says, Ah, Grok, it's fallen over. What are we going to do? Let's, let's bury him. Let's put him to rest. Let him go back to the dragon mother. Uh, you have 
customs for how to do this. Correct? The kobold blinks a little at you and goes, A custom? No? Then maybe we can do it like we do it. Um, just dig a hole and put him in it. The kobolds mutter to themselves and get out a little few shovels they seem to have on their person and start digging a hole, which they put him in. When they're done, they look a little annoyed with each other, a bit confused. You don't think they really cared that he was undead or not, to be honest. Well, he's at rest now. Let's thank him for his service, and keep him in our thoughts. As you're doing this, you see Velen look to you, Roshik, and just roll her eyes. Yes, 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 oh, I'm sure his soul is so happy now he's at rest. I give her a smirk, and uh, and just fiddle a bit with my gauntlets and equipment. I'm feeling pleased with myself, I get back to my mount and reflect upon the fact that that is not at all what I would have done just a few days ago. I didn't care about this undead being, I mean, why would I care? It was not a threat to me, but it is an affront in the eyes of Lathander. I must remember to follow his teachings. I cannot fall now, I cannot afford it, then I cannot serve the Ten Towns, I cannot serve East Haven, I cannot serve Kaliana. Now I have to walk the straight and narrow. Are we done, priest? Can we get going on, you know, the expedition? Yes. Yes, Velen. We can go now. And don't... Don't reanimate anyone else, please. <sighs> you know, it's a very useful tool at times, especially for information gathering, but okay, I won't. Oh, gosh. Priest of Lefander. Moronic. I smile, my uh, best uh, cleric smile. And she grumbles a little more before cracking the reins of her sled. Her dogs come to life and begin moving eastwards. And uh, we follow. I follow, certainly, on my axe peak. Yes, indeed. Let's uh, be about this. I feel a bit of excitement that we are getting closer to this goal. I can't wait to see this uh, city. What if we actually get it flying again? Well, that would certainly be an impressive feat, Roshek, if you're able to somehow get the city out of a glacier. I'd be very impressed with you. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. City in a glacier. And you are off, riding along the road. But it isn't long before you leave the road, leaving behind the silhouette of the lonely wood itself and heading east. Hours pass. Days pass. Whilst before, when riding south, you had the great silhouette of the spine of the world mountains before you, and when you rode north, you had eventually the great sea of moving ice sprawling out before you. This time, there is nothing for quite a way. Eventually, the very, very far away silhouette of the Ragid Glacier comes before you, but this is very far away. The Rugid Glacier is not as long as the spine of the World Mountains, of course. They stretch out almost across the entire continent, but they are still an imposing sight of ice and rock. Two days pass. You ride and you ride some more. Of course, eventually, you have to set up camp and rest, and you are able to do so without too much difficulty. Roshik. Is there anything you do in particular on these two days? You suddenly have an awful lot of time riding in snow, riding with Roman, Velen, and her free now kobold companions. I think over what I've actually learned from Velen herself about what she wants to establish. What did she say she wanted again? So far, she has told you that she is merely interested in powerful artifacts, as well, of course, as finding the city itself. Hmm. Yeah. Let's try to... prod and a little bit more and just find out 
more about her and, and like if anyone sent her and uh, I s try to see if I can loosen any information perhaps about this arcane brotherhood that she's from if she would even admit that well it is on the second night as you were gathered round a makeshift campfire outside the small tents you've assembled that you see Velen making some notes feel free to ask at uh, first as uh, we've been getting off our axe beaks made sure we have our camp set up nicely though kobolds seem to do most of the work for a little while, I entertain myself by summoning forth various spectral weapons and uh, just working them in the air, swinging them about. Uh, I'm inviting uh, Roman for a sparring session. Hmm. And I accept. I, there's not much to do here anyways, and it's always fun to, to uh, do things together with Rorschach. And you notice that my technique has changed. Uh, I am not as strong or as fast as I was before, but somehow I'm driven more by this power that I'm using, and it allows me to swing as fast as I used to, even though the technique is different. I've been meaning to ask you, Roshek, where did you pick all this up? How did you change? Ah, uh, well, that's the, the whole story that I showed you. Remember the swamps, the eternal bleakness, me lying in bed, being ill? I studied something. I studied books about powers, because my body failed, my mind was still there try to figure out how to accomplish things even while I was bedridden with the fever. Uh, that's when I stumbled upon an interesting passage about lending powers not from the gods per se, but from other hosts. What do I know of these other hosts that he's speaking of? You would know that there are indeed ways of getting power from other beings. This is not always a bad thing, but of course, as a priest of Lufanda, you frown a little on it. After all, there's nothing wrong with Arcana, although it can lead to bad things, and of course, there's certainly nothing wrong with worshipping Lufanda. But getting power from other beings is normally a price, normally a cost. It is known that sometimes celestial beings have done such to individuals, but it's quite rare. Normally, it's a tricky thing, and you should be careful, and as Lefander would say, believe in the light, and not seek power elsewhere. What did you promise this being that you made this deal with, Rorschach? Well, I say, as I stand and let the uh, glaive that I had in my hand disappear, and I start drying off some sweat. That's the thing, isn't it? The bargain. I didn't. Not really. I... I lived in a... in a hell that I thought was paradise if I just worked it a little bit harder. But then I was flung out. And I think it was this patron that decided that it wanted more from me. And there I ended up. You found me on that lake. I have had communications since then. Been contacted. What does it tell you to do? <laughs> That's the funny thing, isn't it? It seems to be some sort of being of mischief. And, uh, I don't really want to go into the details. It's not like I've been promising it my soul, or... Uh, well, you see me hesitate for a bit. Yes? Uh, well, yes, it's... <laughs> uh, and I try to remember, how much... Did I get word that I was not supposed to say this or that? 
You do not believe you've been told any such thing. Well, it wants me to... It wants me to play a trick on Aurel, of all the things. Which is probably the reason I was sent here. Hmm. So, common enemies, then? I guess. And in return, I get to play with this, I say, as uh, I snap my fingers and a few sparkling light appears. Uh, I feel ever since I came back, I've been granted more and more of these powers. Yes, you have been growing stronger. I have seen that. Roshik, it's very important that you... You're careful. The forces that you are in contact with, you you do not know so much about it, I gather. It might be that the bargain that has been made will entail much more than, well, than you might think right now. There are very large risks. If, if you, if you feel like you're getting in above your head, and I'm here. I can help you. Lathander can help. We we can help protect you. I strongly believe that. But you need to tell me in that case. All right? Yeah. Yeah. If I need protection, uh, yeah. I mean, it's. I I don't feel that I am in any direct danger unless. Unless maybe I decide to to make someone very angry. And as as our plan and present seems to coincide with what that being wants, I don't see how it would be any particular trouble for us. I suppose we shall have to see. Well, my offer still stands. Be careful. Uh, I wonder how you found out more about these things. I mean, obviously you have your books and everyone knows something about Lathander and his agenda. Hmm, yes. There are holy texts that describe how and what you should do to please him and to follow his teachings. If you do not have anything like that, well, you might still be all right, I suppose, if you're dealing with a benign deity or demigod or whatever it is, but but you might also be walking into a trap. Hmm. I suppose. Uh. Of course, Roshek, you do then look back to the campfire and notice there is a woman there writing things, and she does say she's a wizard. Ah, well, maybe I should look into this matter a bit more, I say, and I put uh, a towel away, and uh, I start putting on a bit more of the furs again, not to get cold, uh, now that I stopped moving. Valen, can I interrupt you for a minute? Hmm? What? Oh, yes, fine. Yes, Roshik, what is it you need? <sighs> you come from some sort of organisation, do you not? I might. Why do you ask? Well, wizards like yourself uh, they usually collect quite a bit of information, isn't that so? Well, yes. I trust you've been observing that I actually write things down, Roshik. You didn't think I was just here for sightseeing, did you? <laughs> and what do you write down, if I may ask? Hmm. Observations. Interesting. Specimens, my thoughts, and some magical formula I have been discussing with myself of late. Notes on the language of the Loros that we will be needing. That's why Professor Scant is here, of course. You see me uh, looking on with a bit of interest as I sit down on one of the sleighs on the furs. So, I wanted to ask, because I am at a disadvantage myself... I use the uh, powers that have been granted me by a host. It's all very uh, funny circumstance. It's nothing that I really asked for, except 
I delved into a few books and somehow, through dreams, I came into contact with a being. I am curious where I would find out more about such hosts. Well, <laughs> uh, normally finding out about the people you make deals with is something you should do first, Rorschach. She looks to you for a moment, Robin. After all, you will overhear this conversation. There is nowhere else to go at this little campsite. But, yes, if you go to any city, any library, and read a book, I'm sure you'll be able to find something. I'd be careful about going to some of the temples, though. Some of the priests are a little sketchy about such things, especially if you've made contract with, oh, I don't know, an archdevil or something. Uh, how do I know what kind of being I have made contact with? Well, again, normally people know beforehand. Beings don't just normally randomly pick people. Are you telling me that the source of your power, which, by the way, I have observed, I knew you were no sorcerer, and you're definitely not a wizard, you have no idea. You just suddenly woke up one day with magical powers. Oh, uh, well, it wasn't... I suppose they came trickling in, weak at first. I try to think back of my time in Barovia, or wherever it was that I ended up eventually. I kept walking for such a long time. How did this actually first come to me? Your memories are hazy. Everything from that period of your life is becoming hazy these days, you realise. You obviously remember the broad strokes, but lately, some of the faces, the, the kingdom, the, and how it even began, it's all a little bit hazy. I don't know for how long it went on. I say to myself, I know I was torn from a place, and suddenly... I was offered to keep some of these powers that I think I have had for a while. If I just helped or did as I was told. Well, let's put it this way, Roshek. Does your patron ask you to sacrifice to them in the name of the Nine Hells? No, no, not really. Do they ask you to purge all evildoers in the name of Celestia and all that? No, it's more like they seem to want to have fun. Huh. Well, I suppose that you can write out angels or devils then. And you're not going insane, are you? Or mad, thinking that nothing makes any sense? Probably not an ancient being beyond all your comprehension. Well, if I did, would I know? I think we'd have noticed by now. Uh, no, it's... I don't think so. I can feel myself changing in a little bit. The world has been... Well, I have been offered a second chance at this world. Hmm. But... No, not nothing of that sort. She squints a little. Huh, well, entertainment. Entertainment. Well, I'm afraid that could mean absolutely anything. Although, hmm, maybe your being is of some neutral disposition. You know how the planar planes work. Ideological alignments actually become physical manifestations. How about trickery and... Uh, Causing mischief. Hmm. Faze. Arch Faye, maybe. <laughs> oh, you'll be in trouble then. Oh, why is that? Because they are beings of unknowable motive. There's no knowing what your patron could want. That's the point. Hmm. I suppose at that. Anyway, she looks to Roman and sort of looks back at her notes, you feel she's beginning to tire of this topical conversation. But again, if you wish to prod to those other th questions you had. Well, be that as it may, what about you, I mean, what? You want to find artifacts, do you help to, to bring them back to something? Did anyone send you to do this? Again, 
She pauses a little. You notice this as well, Roman. Hmm, I study her. I would rather not talk about it, but if you really insist, are you finally insisting on asking such questions? Uh, yes, I think I would like to know. Hmm. Very well, then. Yes, there are individuals who would be interested in my findings. I will give them some information. To be honest, I am mainly concerned with my personal projects. I assume that once you've acquired these things, do you plan to close the route to keep it inaccessible for others, or...? Why would I do that? I just... I don't know what this would mean to the world if such a place was suddenly accessible. It certainly will likely need to be sealed off in some fashion. My colleagues I know of would insist on that, I guess, but that is not my main concern. As I've said, all I'm concerned about is getting what I want, you can have what you want, and then, after that, we'll see what happens if we actually get out of the place, all in one piece. And you want... Am I getting this right? A, a, a mythola? Or, or a... No, that's what you want, Roshik. Oh, to, yes, change the weather. I don't care about that at all. I only care about a select few items I'm hoping will be there, and then I will hopefully safely procure them. Well, I feel like our interests will not conflict with each other. I would be, of course, curious to see what I could find that would help, well, me personally as well. But these things that you are looking for, what exactly are they? You wouldn't even understand if I told you. Try me. Mm. Roll me an insight check, Roman. 24. Roman, she's definitely a little irritated at the questioning. But she's also not not answering. You feel maybe if you just keep putting pressure on, she'll answer. But for some reason, she just seems concerned about answering all these questions, you think to yourself. Hmm, she might have some things to hide. Or, well, revealing her motives will perhaps reveal weaknesses that she might not want to share with us. But I'm glad that Roshik is asking these questions. I uh, move up as well, and I look to her, yes, it, I think... Roshek is asking some very good questions. I, too, am very, very interested. I'm sure you are, Roman. You're waiting for me to say I'm after the great ancient staff of Necronomicus, and I'm going to use it to summon an undead army and kill all of the good Lefander-loving folk. Isn't that right? Hmm. If that was your plan, I would have to purge you. Of course you would. It's not. I'm looking for a spellbook. There you go. See? A spellbook in particular. Hmm. And there's nothing nefarious in it, I'm sure. There might be things nefarious in it. I don't know. I have to read it first. Uh, and was it from the Netherese Empire, then? Of course. Uh, and what? Is it a particular thing you want to accomplish with this? Yes, precisely. And what is that? Magical experimentation. I'm not going to sit here and give you a two-hour lecture on my theories of quasi-dimensional manipulation. Suffice to say, I'm a wizard. I want a spell book. Are you happy now? Some other artifacts will also, of course, be of interest to me, but that is the main goal. Particularly uh, the spell book, obviously, of the arch wizard who would have been in command of the city. Ah, uh, yes. What a well of information that would be. Precisely. Extremely valuable. Extremely impressive. That is what I want. Are you happy? One book, probably. I see. Yeah. And, and is this tied to, to like, your organisation that you want to bring it back to them, or is it just for yourself? She wrinkles her nose. It's for myself. They can have plenty of other treasures there, I'm sure. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Do you think there are more people, like, that are 
rivals of yours like the one that we found in the snow that are out there now looking for this? She squints and looks at you a little suspiciously. There might be others after the city, yes, but we've done very well. Nas Lantimir is no more, and, well, another individual was burned by your town, so, to be honest, I now am quite confident we have a head start. Ah. Uh, all right. I just want to know what we are up against, that's all. You're up against an expedition and untold dangers that may await in the city. There could be magical guardians. There could be untold horrors awaiting for us down there. I don't know, but I'm hopeful if we are quick and clever, we will be able to get what we need. Get what I need. You can get what you need. And then the rest of it, well, you won't need to worry about that. Fair enough, I suppose. I start preparing some food and meal and I'm thinking to myself what to make of this I don't know why why I should take one side over the other really what I've agreed to here I don't know which is better one wants one thing and offers the same as the other it's like they're both just well I'll be able to take what I want from this place so why should I go on the side of one of them? Roman, you, though, have heard something in this conversation you've not heard before. You can ask Roshek or Velen about it. Roman said Arcane Brotherhood. Roshek mentioned it to Velen. She was a bit evasive about it, but where the hell did Roshek get that? Arcane Brotherhood, Arcane Brotherhood. Isn't that, isn't that like a powerful organization in Luskan, you think to yourself? Right. The Arcane Brotherhood. I, um... I mean, knowing that Velen would, of course, know of them, I... The Arcane Brotherhood, I, I say to Roshak, where, where have you heard of them? Hmm? I uh, look up. Uh, did I say that out loud? You did. Well... I don't know if I told you, but I come from the hills north of Port Last. It's not that terribly far off from Luskin. Travellers go by and you hear all sorts of things. That's one of the powerful organisations of wizards that I know about. Roman, that seems to you quite a logical answer, but you realise why this is confusing you. It's not that he knows of this organisation, it's that why he would suddenly just speak randomly of that organisation in regard to Velen. After all, didn't Danef say that the wizard, the wizard you burned, the main suspicion was that he was of the Arcane Brotherhood. She was very concerned there were others out there, and as far as she was concerned, they were a threat to the Ten Towns. Hmm. The one that we burned in East Haven, he belonged to the Arcane Brotherhood. I mean, it's starting to come together, isn't it? One plus one. They're all part of that brotherhood, aren't they? Velen, too, and that... That thing that was buried on the island. She spoke of that one as, as being related to her, did she not? Uh, so it seems. Well, all I know of the Arcane Brotherhood is what I've been told, and that is that they are, um... Well, they shouldn't be trusted. They saw them as a threat. What do you know of their agenda? Only that it's probably not going to be anything good for us or for the Ten Towns. I can't imagine. I just roll my eyes and throw up my hands. I don't know, I suppose. Well, it's just wizards. Wizards looking for more and more information and things to study. And not letting things get in their way unless... Unless it somehow benefits them indirectly. I could see that there's caused this ruthlessness sometimes. But uh, now we're far off from that, right? And your part of this is supposed to help the town, right? I can hear you muttering over there, you two, by the way. 
Uh, do you want to let in on the conversation? Mm. Felon sighs a little and then looks at you, Roman. Fine, yes, I am of the Arcane Brotherhood, just in case you think I'm avoiding the question for secrecy. I'm not. I did think that, so it's good that you come clean with that. All right, you're part of the Arcane Brotherhood. Go on. That's all. Everything else I've told you is true. You can tell why I didn't want to bring it up earlier. You are already now thinking of schemes and plans and how I am secretly out to get everything. You're not entirely wrong, of course. The Arcane Brotherhood does have a reputation for a reason, but at the same time, I am being truthful. I am here for my own desires. And... Hopefully, doesn't need to interfere, does it? Just on the ground that maybe I'm up to something nefarious because I'm a necromancer, she says, dripping sarcasm as she looks at you, Roman. Mm. I must admit that it is difficult for me to not judge a book by its cover in the case of necromancers. Well, I try to um, analyze what she said. Does it seem like she's telling the truth? Based on your insight role from before... Seems truthful. She has, after all, admitted it, and she's got a point. You wonder if you'd be as understanding of her now if she'd mentioned all the way at the beginning that she was a member of the Arcane Brotherhood. After all, Captain Danoff was not wrong. That wizard did lead off a whole bunch of people from your town and admit to getting them killed. But he was also a red wizard of Fae. Yes. Well... Now that we're all being so truthful with each other, I hope that this can be the start of a more, well, trusting relationship. Let's share <laughs> the things that we are keeping secret. Let's, well, yes, let's not keep secrets. Let's, let's find a way to work together now and get this thing done. Sure thing. And in answer to your earlier question, Roshik, no, we have no reason to be afraid of anyone else. You forget. We found the codicil of white. No one else has or would be able to, especially in the time frame. Therefore, no one will be able to catch up with us or know where we're going. Well, um, unless they already knew where we were going, of course, and they're looking to meet us there somehow. I mean, you seem like you really don't get along very well in your organization. People die and it doesn't really matter. It's quite competitive, isn't it? Not entirely true. Open conflict is actually forbidden by the rules of the Arcane Brotherhood. We would not exist as we do if everyone was allowed to kill each other at whim. We're not like the Red Wizards of Fae. But unfortunately, there might have been a little disagreement... And, well, it seems to have led to us all going our separate ways. Ah, uh, I see. I told you I didn't wish for the Nas to meet the end she did, but, well, she decided to do things on her own, and you saw where it led, including the theft. Yes, I suppose I did at that. Hmm. So would you have worked together with her if... Well, if she had been there with you instead of setting off? The girl was a moron, but I wouldn't have wanted to cause her any harm, no. Dizan, we're much better off without. He was a red wizard after all. We're not the same thing, by the way. No, that's another organisation I heard of. I didn't realise you could be both. Of course. Any wizard from any background can join the Arcane Brotherhood. Hmm. And... Anyone else that we should know about? No, just a stupid tiefling. But again, she was young and cocky, and we will not, I feel, be seeing her again, I'm sure. Huh. Wasn't there a tiefling in the... in East Haven, Roman? There was indeed. Oh? Yes. An albino tiefling, right? Hmm. An albino tiefling. Well would suit her appearance. It's possible she'll be planning something, but again, she's by herself, and well, as I said, we have the codicil of white. Um, I only saw a whisper in the ears of the 
mayor there, or whatever her role was. They were talking about helping out with the revealing the Dwerga threat, or whatever it was. Is that right, Roman? Hmm. I tried to remember again, what was it actually that we learned uh, there? What was it that that tiefling said? The tiefling told you that they had found out about the Dwegar invasion. They had already dealt with a group where they were, and they were coming to help you with yours, which they did. If you recall, she was the reason they were able to capture that prince. Hmm. That is true. Well, that tiefling was of great service to Easthaven in stopping the Dwergar. She seemed to be on our side, I suppose, if there are sides in all this. I assure you that Avarice's only side is her own. She will definitely have done whatever she was doing to garner some favour, or weasel some information, or simply get coin from you. What else do you know about her? She's an idiot, an arrogant braggart, an evoker, the simplest form of wizardry, of course. Mm. Clearly not on the level of necromancy, I say and smile. No, of course not. Necromancy requires a subtle touch. Evocation is the simplest of all the magic schools. Blowing things up, making lightning spark, making ice and fire appear at will. And about her personal agenda, is it the same of yours, or...? What do you mean? No, I seek knowledge and betterment for others. She merely wishes for the biggest fireballs. I could not abide her. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. It all seems a bit petty, I say, and I start eating. Says the man who goes round randomly attacking frost giants. <laughs> uh, you've got me there, I suppose. I do. It wasn't. Mind you... He attacked me at that. I was merely trying to make conversation. Hmm. Anyway, as always, keep an eye out, but short of her sending a familiar after us, we would see her in this great wilderness, so I assure you that if we don't see her first, there is no way she could be tracking us. She also has no idea where we're going, and doesn't have the codicil, so I assure you, she won't be an issue. Hmm. That is good to hear. I lean back, and, uh think upon all this, and to me, indeed, still doesn't answer the question, what would I garner from being on one side or the other in this? Indeed, Roshik, that is heavy on your mind. Roman, of course, does not know of these things, but you do now feel that you know a little more of this villain. Again, can you truly trust what she says, though? The Arcane Brotherhood... They are known for being ruthless and doing whatever they can to obtain arcane knowledge and power. They live in Luskan, after all, and Luskan itself is a city of ill repute. Luskan, yes. Luskan is not not a reputable place, certainly. Mm. Well, I have to keep my eyes open. She seems to have been forthcoming now, but um, I'm sure there are things she's not saying, and... While her motives are... seem straightforward, there might be... Well, I think she would not hesitate to sacrifice us uh, in order to get what she wants. She goes into the tent, adjusting her eye patch. And that's when you notice Roman on the horizon. Darkness. Solid darkness. Coming closer and closer, but of course it's not solid darkness. It's merely that the light you would normally be able to see at this time of night is getting darker and darker as the wind picks up and the snow begins to fall. You know what is coming. You have maybe a couple of minutes before the blizzard hits you. What do you do, Roman? There's a blizzard. We have to get into cover. Is there anything around here? I, I tried looking around. Any, any, any caves? There are not. You are out in the open. There are merely your tents and the fireplace. What do you do? i got to get inside the tents then and try to close them up as best as we can. Is there anything that you can do? Um, I say to Velen, to protect us from the blizzard. 
she sort of stumbles out. What? Uh, oh, oh, right, yes. Oh, well, hang on quickly then. Uh, 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 just to get, get, get the... Uh, Rushik, do... Start digging out an area around the tent. Quickly, quickly. And, uh... I start trying to blast the ground open there using the force of my patron for this because that is the fun way to do it. Yes, and you begin quickly making a bit of a circle around the tents. You're not quite sure why, although you think to yourself, basic survival. Surely this gives you some space just in case a blizzard hits and maybe it's makes sort of like a wall or something, but you're not quite sure if that's going to be that helpful. But then, Velen begins to cast a spell. She begins extending her hand all around you in a 30-foot radius, and a sort of shimmering wall appears, encompassing you, the tents, and your animals, as well as the kobolds. They've all quickly gathered together near the tents. The shimmering wall looks like there's also a bit of a ceiling as well. It's like you've got a little cup or something that's just suddenly surrounding you. Roman, you can tell that magic is afoot. And then the blizzard hits. Snow and ice and sleet and rain begin pounding all around you. But they don't hit any of you. It's as if a small barrier has been formed around you, keeping out the fury of the storm. Although you do feel the temperature drop, nonetheless. Yeah. Oh, I, um, I try to just get in, into cover and, and, um, I, I look to Velen with, well, I suppose, some gratitude in my eyes. She frowns and moves to sit by the fire. You're all now a little more cramped. You've all had to quickly gather into this small area, literally around the tents. You can see the snow piling up around you outside. We'll be fine for the night. The spell will last that long, but in the morning, we'll have to hope it breaks. I, uh, stand for a bit, and I look at this barrier, and I see the sleet and the snow sort of splashing and bouncing off it. Yeah, those are the kinds of things I should see if I could learn. Nothing that I know that I could draw upon would do something like that. Uh, very handy. And then I pick out a set of drums. An old, dusty set of drums. And I just uh, crack my fingers. I haven't played in ages. I used to be quite good at this. And I s slowly start drumming a little uh, to the sound of the blizzard smattering all around us. And so the night goes on, the cold fury of the dales hitting your little magical hut it seems. It does seem as if it will last till the morning, Roman, but you are a little concerned. A blizzard like this might not be gone by then, but for now you are safe, but you are cold. And the noise continues along with the drums well into the night. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played Icewind Dale, Rime of the Frost Maiden, for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. The music was created by Flowers for Body Snatchers, Ugasanye, Word Clock, and Metatron Omega, and was used with permission from their label Cryochamber. Check them out at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more Dark Ambient. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, and David Hogbari for their generous support. And we would of course like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, this show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. May Lathander protect you, and fill the world with light. <laughs>